So I bought a 2003 Ford Taurus. Now, naturally, I needed a way to connect my phone to the sound system. Normally, I would put in an aftermarket system like I did on my Silverado and my Ford Ranger. However, on the Taurus, there are two issues with that. Number one, the shape of the original factory stereo. It's a very odd shape, and it also happens to contain the heater controls. Now, they do make kits, as you can see here. However, I think they kind of look a little silly. I think it looks best with the factory stereo just the way it is. This is especially true if you happen to have a Taurus with the oval stereo. Here's an example of one that really looks, uh, just doesn't look really good. So I don't want to have to do that. There's a second reason you don't want to replace the factory unit with an aftermarket. And that is that the head unit in the dashboard is mostly just a remote control box. The actual stereo itself is a little tin box in the trunk of the car. That tin box contains most of the actual stereo components as well as the amplifier. You would have to run speaker wire from the dash to each speaker or at least down to the trunk where you can then tap into the wires that then go out to the speakers. It's a real hassle. And there's nothing wrong with my factory stereo other than the fact that it doesn't have any kind of auxiliary input. I already looked into ways to hack into the CD changer in the trunk. A lot more complicated than you would think. It's got some kind of digital interface that's uh, just not easy to hack. There are boxes you can buy that some people have made, but I didn't want to go that route. Another route is to replace that head unit with one that's been modified with an auxiliary that goes into the cassette deck. Those don't work as well according to what I've read online, and they're expensive because somebody manually makes those things. So of course the natural move would be to get a cassette adapter. I had actually forgotten all about these cassette adapters until I saw a video on technology connections. I'll put a link below because he actually explains how they work, so I don't need to get into the details of how how these things actually work. I know how they work, but rather than repeat, I'll just link to him below. He does a pretty good job of explaining it, and he touches on the Bluetooth ones, which are brand new. Well, to me, they're brand new. So I was browsing through my local O'Reilly store here in town, and I ran across this guy. I was looking for just the regular with the uh, aux out cord, but uh, I saw this guy, and it is a Bluetooth adapter. It's not in the box, obviously, it's in the car. But for $30, I can have Bluetooth in my car. I thought, great, that's perfect. That solves all my problems. It does to a point. However, I have a few things I would like to recommend to manufacturers of these devices that could really improve the overall experience. Two of them are mechanical, and the rest can be done via software, I believe, through the driver or perhaps a bundled app. So let's get on to the first issue. The first issue is where they locate the charger port. You do have to charge this up via USB. And then they say gives you about five hours of runtime. I haven't tested the duration just yet, but you do have to charge it. They put the charger input right on the side of the cassette that faces outward. Where this becomes a problem, at least for me, is you might be tempted to go ahead and stick that charger into the cassette while it's still sitting in the front of the deck, which you can do. But what you can also do is accidentally nudge that cassette and the deck will suck it in and then down. I can only imagine what that will do to either the charge cable the cassette itself, or even the actual stereo system. I could imagine that causing some kind of damage in any case. So why not relocate that charge cable to the top of the cassette, a very unused portion of the cassette, just right around the corner. Very simple, in my opinion. Very simple place to put that. And then you can't accidentally insert it into the cassette deck with that connected. My second issue with this device is that little power button. You have to press and hold it, generally with a fingernail, because if you use your whole finger, you're going to block the little LED that you need to look at to determine if it is on or not. You have to hold it for about two seconds until that LED starts flashing blue or red and blue, depending on whether it's paired or not. And then to power it off, you have to press and hold that same button for five seconds until it flashes red twice. I find this extremely annoying. Now it will auto power off after three minutes if you are out of Bluetooth range. So sure, you can shut the car off, go in the grocery store, do your thing, come out, and it's powered off. Well now how do you turn it back on? You eject it, press and hold the power button for two seconds until it starts pairing again, then put it back in the deck. So here's my suggestion. While in playback mode, those two spindles, they're just geared directly to each other, internally into the cassette. Why can't the device detect that those are turning? If they are turning, it will automatically power on. If it stops turning for more than, say, 30 seconds, power off. Now when you get out of your car, it stops turning, the cassette is still in the deck, but it's just not moving, powers off. You go do your shopping, you get back out, you start the car, it starts moving again, the cassette unit detects that and powers on and starts pairing to your phone. This can be done with a mechanical switch, a magnetic sensor, or even an optical sensor. Just some kind of way to determine that it is in fact moving. Now on to some things 
that I think can be resolved completely in software, just a driver update really. This is something that you can fix on existing units that are out there such as mine. Most factory cassette decks have Dolby noise reduction. On some, like mine, you can press a button and turn the Dolby noise reduction off. However, I didn't even find that button for quite a while. So I found myself going into Spotify and adjusting the EQ to compensate. Dolby noise reduction, in a simplified manner, it boosts the high frequencies on the recording and then drops those high frequencies on playback. What this results in is lowered tape hiss. However, if you're playing back a cassette or an adapter that isn't encoded in Dolby noise reduction, what you end up with is a muffled sound with the treble being cut significantly. Now if your deck does not have the option to disable Dolby noise reduction, well now you're stuck with a problem. I saw it at first by going into Spotify and bumping up the last two bands of the equalizer. And this worked okay. This actually sounded pretty darn good. However, the next time I used Spotify on a different speaker or with headphones or anything else, the treble was way too much. This should be adjusted within the actual driver of the cassette adapter. Now, I don't believe you need a licensed Dolby technology to just boost the treble a little bit. It could just be a noise reduction compensation option. And while you're in there, why not also throw in a user settable equalizer to compensate for things such as dirty or misaligned tape heads in the deck itself and other acoustic problems in your stereo. And those will only apply to that cassette adapter, not all your other speakers and devices. It sounds like a simple enough idea. Send me the code and I'll I'll add those features in there. Send me the code to that driver. Okay, my final thought is this one. In my Taurus, and there's no way to disable this feature, if it detects silence on a cassette for more than, I think it's about three or four seconds, it starts fast forwarding. It's called auto seek. It's trying to seek all the way up to the next track or song or whatever. Now this becomes a problem if there's too much space between your songs on Spotify or if it stops to buffer for a few seconds. But where it really becomes an annoyance is when you're using it as a hands-free telephone device and you're talking the other end is being quiet listening of course the cassette adapter just sees silence and it starts whirring and fast forward and now you have to press the button that says tape to stop it doing that so while we're sensing the movement of those spindles why not also sense if it speeds up if it starts speeding up emit a small tone or a blip or something like that just something to trick the mechanism into thinking okay i found sound again let's stop the seeking. That seems like a simple enough solution. So while this adapter is great, it's a great way to, with no wiring, no tools, anything necessary to add Bluetooth capabilities with hands-free calling. Even this little button they give you that lets you answer and hang up a call or even double click to skip a song on Spotify or whatever app. Yes, it adds all that functionality with no tools necessary. It's great. But with a few little tweaks and improvements, this could be a very great product. I already know that the device communicates back and forth with the phone. Number one, it is a telephone device. It has a button that interacts with apps on the phone. It even tells me the battery percentage of the cassette itself. So there's no reason they could not add some of those features. Bottom line is move that charger port, sense whether or not the spindles are turning and power on and off accordingly, compensate for Dolby noise reduction, allow custom equalizer presets just for that device to compensate for other audio issues, and finally do something about the auto seek function of a lot of cassette decks. So there you have it. There's my review. It's not really a review. I love the thing. It's great. And on a long trip, it's awesome. But if you're stopping getting in and out of the car, it is a royal pain to eject it. Press and hold that button. Turn it back on. Put it back in the deck every damn time you get back in the car to get your Bluetooth back on. I find myself just saying, screw it, I'll listen to the FM radio until I'm going to be on the road for more than a few minutes. As always, thank you for watching. If you want a lot of behind-the-scenes content, check out my Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.